Tonight you can expect to see your share of ghosts for Halloween, right? Well, so that got us thinking around here. What are some of our former colleagues up to? What are some of the ghosts of CBS News up to? So far we've caught up with Megan Malachy, Tracy Townsend, Derek Blakely, Vince Girasoli, and now a real gem. There she is, a true CBS2 in Chicago treasure, Linda McLennan joining us now uh, live. Uh, Linda, uh, your time here uh, in retrospect has grown in legend. It was you, it was Lester Holt. Uh, it was yeah. what, the late 80s you came here? I mean, it was a whole different era. And for, oh a, my a, God. A, for a woman at that, knowing what has transpired over the decades and you know the, the Me Too movement we've just gone through, what was it like um, as a young woman in the 80s coming to the big city to, to take on the top role? It was, it, it was thrilling, it was exhilarating, it was uh, terrifying in some ways. Um, I had come from Toronto where, I, where I'd grown up and where I was doing the Canadian equivalent of the Today Show. So a network television morning show, a lot of news, uh, a little bit of other things, entertainment and stuff. Um, and then I got headhunted by CBS and, uh, oh yeah, the days of big hair, and uh, oh, yeah, came in at 1987 in March. March 7th, 1987 was my first day on the air at Channel 2. It was also the first day of the Writers Guild strike. So I show up, uh, get out of the, the taxi, walk up to the building. The building is surrounded by picketers. And I, so that was sort of overwhelming in and of itself. And then they started, they broke into O Canada. Wow. <laughs> no way. On my behalf, I guess. And I, it, it was just that scene was just, I mean, I think my eyes were as big as saucers. I was just like, what am I getting into? Where am I? And how, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. No, no, we're, not <laughs> we're not in, in Toronto, Toronto anymore. Um, anyway, they were very, they were very pleasant. They were on strike, but they were very pleasant. And so for the first few weeks while the strike was on, I was, you know, I was crossing the picket line, nothing to brag about there, but, um, uh, so that that was one aspect of it the just the very first aspect of it but um you know it was walter jacobson was my first co-anchor uh we were doing an hour and a half show in the afternoon live lots and lots of interviews um and i used to joke about the fact that even though i was coming from canada I had to overcome the language barrier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So schedule or lieutenant or all those mm -hmm. other things and and uh, things that sometimes you don't even expect. And I, I, you know, I'd be sitting co-anchoring. There'd be Walter on my side, and I'd be anchoring the camera. And out of my peripheral vision, I could see his head sort of whip around. And I knew I'd said something wrong. Oh gosh! I would, I would hear about it in the next commercial break, mm -hmm. but you know, and then often. I had a little accent. Um, the well, one I, I, I get it though, because I'm I'm a Michigan guy, so I've had to overcome oh, some of those I, same things, those little nuances. I mean, people I, would, would grind me about for years here, and they would say, "Say this," and I would say it how you're supposed, and they're saying, "No, you're not saying it right. You're not saying it right." Exactly. You are and I are both on the same page with that. I don't know how many news directors I had who'd say, "Linda." say how no say house not house <laughs> yeah right and i can still picture one of them standing at the back of the studio again in my per peripheral vision i can see them like look at me like you got to get start getting it right you're saying white house all the time but you're not saying it right or whatever um so those were you know those were learning days um and I remember one of my first assignments was uh, the night of the uh, mayoral elections, and I was sent down to Harold Washington's headquarters, which in and of itself was a huge deal. Um, I, I have to say I was pretty intimidated by a lot of this. I mean, these were big stories. This was a big, big city, bigger than I'd ever been in, and um, a great news market. And, you know, as as you found out and I found out, people don't really abide the new folks very well initially. No, I mean, no. you, do have to, you have to prove yourself, right? A hazing. 
yeah, yeah. you get a hazing. An initiation. An initiation, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, But I have to say those early days, they were also so exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the first female co-anchor at 10. Uh, when the, so that was in 1990, I started co-anchoring with Bill at 10, and by then Lester and I were co-anchoring the afternoon newscast. So that was great. We joke about how uh, you know with, with when it was with Walter, uh, Lester and I were sort of you know commiserating and always wanted to anchor together, and we kept saying to the mm -hmm. news director, "L squared, L squared, mm -hmm. come on, let's get with L squared." Yeah, so, and Lester. we did. So then we finally ended up together, and I was anchoring with him for I think it was 14 years. Um, but <laughs> Walter Jacobson. So I've been brought back and forth from Toronto to do interviews, right? And do a sort of like a screen test kind of thing. Yeah. And I remember one day, uh, the news director, Ron Kershaw was walking me back out through the, the newsroom, which was also the studio and Bill and Walter were on at six o'clock then. And so I'm walking back through the newsroom and in his not so quiet little whisper, they were in commercial break. Walter turns to Bill and he says, I don't get it. She's not that good looking. Oh boy, back in the day. I mean that 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 was how the talk was. I mean that was how the talk was when I started. You know, uh, twenty years ago. Uh, and I was just seeing the, the the highlight clips of you. I mean, you got Bill Curtis, Jim Avila, uh, Mike oh, Parker, legends Mike of the Parker. game. Uh, okay, but we we got just a couple minutes left. I want to know, and people want to know what you're up to now. Uh, you stayed, you stayed for a long time, North Shore, a lot of charity work, and then you you got out of Dodge. Um, I was doing a lot of photography. Um, I left the North Shore in uh, uh, right before the pandemic, and I moved right back downtown to the Loop, Block 87. And so my last place up until May, I was living on Sheridan Road, right on the lake, and and, and enjoying downtown, but. Uh, being in the loop for the pandemic and yeah. uh, all that followed that was pretty, all oh, of my kids, uh, pretty, pretty scary, I have to say. Um, so I went up to, to Edgewater. Um, but then since May, I've relocated to Florida. Wow. Um, like a lot of people my age and uh, who were tired of the gray of Chicago. And so I've been in Jacksonville, which is not a common destination for a lot of Chicagoans, but mm -hmm. um, I really like it. I get a little taste of the seasons up there. And then I have my elderly aunt and uncle who live in Tallahassee. So, you know, I'm just sort of doing family things. I met my daughters in Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale right now, helping her move in and my son's moved. And so it's just sort of family time. I'm doing some oil painting. I'm still doing a lot of photography, but I'm just, it's, I'm, I'm having a really good time. Wow, well, yeah, you are beautiful. Uh, you are a real, deal journalist a real deal talent i say looking back i said if they would have just stuck with linda and lester we would have been you know but, but that, that's a whole nother story that's a whole other story uh, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, you, you look fantastic you've raised yeah. your beautiful kids i'm so happy to hear uh we have our first snow here today so oh, you do I, I, oh, yes, I won't you, rub it in i won't rub it in i promise yeah, so you don't rub it in don't don't <laughs> send me some shot of the sunshine uh uh linda mcclellan a great to see uh, mcclellan uh great to see you in uh a, a pleasure to to have you on the show and uh, a lot of people are going to be thrilled to see your face Thank you, Brad. Thanks so much. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you. Former CBS uh, main anchor here, Linda McLennan, now in Florida. We appreciate your time. Happy Halloween.